and then we'll do influences. influences in the hey everybody, it's Brian Polito, creator of Mike Morg and publisher of Coffin Comics, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my influences for creating this story and why it was inevitable that I created Mike Morg. So here's Mike Morg and his sidekick Ratso, and right off the bat, Mike Morg's an ultra-violent story with a bit of comedy and some heart. It's about a kid who is kidnapped by a mad scientist and turns into this thing. It is the story of the trials and tribulations and how he learns to embrace this totally horrific power that demands human souls. Now, that's the story briefly. I don't want to say too much, but I figured I'd talk to you a little bit about some of the influences that went into Mike Moore. So first up, don't get it twisted. Let's get right to the soul of it. Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster as depicted in the Universal Horror series is a big influence. I just love the idea of um, something coming back from death into some sort of half-life. That's why we call this story necromorphosis, like death transformation. Our kid actually is murdered, but comes back in a new transformation. I also liked in the Frankenstein story the idea that lightning creates life. And our bad guy, Dr. Riggsdale, who's the fourth generation scientist, uh, his entire family lineage has been trying to find life inside lightning. And in fact, finally upon meeting Mike and his friends, does learn just that. I love horror comics, so there's a lot of fun ones. Not, it's not a particular one, it's like an energy of horror comics. So here's uh, a great uh, Power Records version of the Monster of Frankenstein number one. Comes with a record that kind of plays along. Killer art by Mike Plug. But there's other types. For example, do you remember in the 90s, Gore Shriek by Fantico? As an aside, this is the first published cover by Greg Capullo. But man, the energy of the splatterpunk scene, whether it was kind of in comics or in fiction, super duper over the top. Now, I love and adore all mid-70s Marvel monsters, whether it's Dracula, Ghost Rider, Man-Thing, Satana. I mean, the list goes on, right? So I love, and actually, let's get into not only Marvel monsters, but even like before the heroic monsters, let's go back to the old school monsters. Uh, here's a fun one I uh, adore, which is called Tales of Suspense, that's number 10. And all the monster stuff is great. I've enjoyed it since I was a little kid. That's not all. I like heavy metal. So this is super rando, but I'm just gonna show you some metal stuff. I would say the thrash metal era, coming off the new age of uh, British heavy metal, really kind of does it for me. And in the 70s, I, I love rock and classic rock, but as uh, the new age of British heavy metal bands like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest came along, then this whole new thing called thrash metal came, and that energy is, uh, I really like to evoke that myself. It just, that chugga 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 is just amazing. So this is very few examples. This is an odd, Metallica example, because Injustice for All is considered fairly progressive. I would say my favorite Metallica record would be Ride the Lightning. And I know Master is it for a lot of people. I also like Kill Em All. So that punk rock, speedy energy, you'll find this in Mike Moore. And just rounding it off, I mean, who doesn't like crazy Haunted House albums? They're fun, you know, crazy, eerie stuff. So certainly, we'd have to say music plays a big role of what's going on in Mike Moore. But that ain't all, everybody, because I love me some horror magazines. Feast your eyes on a reproduction of Eerie number one. This is creepy number one. Scary, scary monsters. Like to this day, I'm all about the monster magazines. It goes on forever. Check out this great cover, Weird Magazine, taking out Frankenstein's brain. Great ones like Monster World and of course, the OG, Famous Monsters of Film Land number one. I'm a monster kid. I could actually prove I'm a monster kid. Here's my famous Monsters of Film Land membership card. That makes me an official monster kid. And that stuff is just the best. You know, the whole thing about Famous Monsters of Film Land, particularly in the early era, I would say up to like number 70, what they were doing is they were taking these public domain photographs from monster movies that were uh, available to repurpose. 
And so you'd get all the coolest, crazy monsters in there. And in fact, that influenced the Mike Morg storyline. We're actually looking at these old, crazy black and white monsters from the 60s to influence the orderlies that work for Dr. Riggsdale, people with just these super messed up faces, definitely coming from the old famous monsters. I gotta tell you, I am a particular fan of characters that transform, and here you have the ultimate, right? The Hulk, the Jekyll Hyde story, because he starts out as an unassuming 18-year-old kid, and then he turns into this other thing. And that is something I love in comics, whether it be Werewolf of Night. So here we have the example, 18-year-old Mike Morgana, once he's powered up, he has these kill fists and he transforms into something else. I do love that in the Hulk, I love that in Jekyll and Hyde, and Werewolf by Night. Any character where you see these multiple panels of them transforming and the agony of the transformation, I just think is great. So here's an example of that, here's good old uh, Incredible Hulk 102, when Hulk finally got his own magazine. So folks, that kind of concludes and only really probably scratches the surface and uh, top of the iceberg of influences for my upcoming comic book, Mike Morg. But if you're interested and this uh, piques your interest, Mike Morg will be available on Kickstarter on Wednesday, September 11th at 6 p.m. Arizona time. We're about to announce a real uh, detailed preview shortly and we're gonna have covers by some incredible artists. And so stay tuned and please consider Mike Borg in your entertainment considerations. Later.